Natalia, let me start with you. What is your reaction to this law being passed in Canada? I would like to thank everybody who took part in creation of this law. We are very happy that it bears the name of uh, Sergei Magnitsky and it will be uh, always in the memories of the people. I also would like to highlight that this law has a global character and it's aimed into fighting corruption in all countries. Nikita, why was it important to you to come here? I'm very proud of what my father did and I respect him quite a lot for his actions and uh, the fact that he stood up to corruption and uh, injustices and I think it's a good way for me to honor his memory to be present here today. What do you remember of him because you were so young when he yeah. died? Uh, yeah I was fairly young so I guess I didn't get to know him as much as I would like to know him. I remember that he was a person who always kind of followed a certain set of ideals that he had and he would always um, sort of stand up for what he thinks. He would, uh, we would sometimes argue. and um, Even at that age? Yeah, a bit, but, you know, it, it wasn't like a debate. It was more of a uh, kind of friendly discussion, I guess. Natalia, you mentioned that this is, it's a global effort to deal with human rights abuses. But initially, even this government was reluctant to pass the act. There was concern at some levels that there was another way of dealing with Russia, with human rights concerns, that they didn't want to agitate I mean, Vladimir Putin. Uh, what would you say to countries that are frightened about passing a Magnitsky Act because of that? Well, I, th I think I already mentioned that it's a global law and I think that priority tasks of any government is to fight corruption around the world. And it's uh, fighting the corruption and to uh, defend uh, uh, people's rights. I think we will be able to fight this problem when all the countries will unite in this uh, war. Nikita, this, this law in Canada and elsewhere doesn't just bear your father's name, it bears your name. When you hear it, what does it sound like to you? What does it mean to you? I think it just makes me really proud of my father and I have to highlight the fact that they're his deeds and people should remember him for what he did and um, he should be the primary association with this law but also the law should be associated with all the people in the world who, world who are facing corruption and who are facing uh, human rights violations. And I think that's the most important thing because that's kind of what has the most effect on the modern world. Natalia, you, you left Russia because the Russian government didn't seem to be done with your family. After the death of uh, Sergei, we wanted the appropriate investigation, a fair investigation into the death of Sergei Magnitsky. Many facts were not uh, evaluated on the legal grounds and uh, we decided to leave Russia. Whenever people talk about the Magnitsky Act, they invariably talk about how your father died and all of the things that led up to it. And I wonder if at the same time that you're proud of the fact that this act has been passed and what it talks about and what it says about your father's actions, if it isn't also difficult for you to keep hearing the details of his death. Uh, honestly, just the, his memory, uh, my memories of him and uh, my pride for him, it honestly overwhelms those kinds of feelings. I. I only remember him for the best things that he's done and I think I've come to cope with a kind of grief. And the reality of it? Yeah. I want to ask your mom, I, so I just asked Nikita to talk about how difficult it is to, to constantly hear about the details of um, his father, your husband's death. As a mom, how do you manage that? How do you manage both raising your son, keeping him safe, keeping him secure and happy with knowing that this is always a presence in your lives? 
Ну, это понятно, нам до сих пор очень тяжело вспоминать. It's understandable that it is, it is still very hard for us to remember the details and the whole tragedy around us. I would like to say that Nikita is the one who supports me the most, and he is a grown-up young man, and he is assisting me in keeping myself together and not to break down entirely. Nikita, I mean, at 12 years old, you're in Washington translating for your mom as she's talking to John McCain, who was one of the leading voices in getting this act passed in the United States. At 16, you're sitting here talking to me and, and the rest of Canadians about what has to be, on some level, a very difficult topic. Tell me what it, it's like for you to try to manage that with just being a 16-year-old. You know, I never really thought of that. And um, it's kind of an interesting question, because I think everyone faces a lot of difficulty in their lives, regardless of where they're from and who they are. Everyone has their own burdens and uh, difficulties. But I feel like if I, you know, wasn't able to do this, I wouldn't really be able to be with myself because I have to do something for my father after he's done so much for all of us. Quite apart from the person that we see sitting in front of me now, you know, the other part of your life is that you're an artist and you can express yourself through art. And I understand that's part of what you want to do when you meet with the Prime Minister. Can you show us what you've done? Sure. And so what is important about this to share with him? I think this is just kind of a show of gratitude for him. And uh, honestly, I just wanted to bring something that, would, that he could appreciate as an artwork. And um, yeah. And important to you to share that yeah, with him. That sounds, it's a personal expression of you. Yeah, it was one of the first pieces that I did when I just started learning. So it kind of holds a bit of importance to me, but I'm really happy that he can have it. My last question for you, Natalia, is do you hope that there comes a time when talking about Sergei is something that exists simply within your family, that it doesn't need to be a public conversation? Do you look forward to that? I never thought about this question. It just happens. It, it happens, and we always remember Sergei. I always think, how would Sergei do in certain situations? And I try to do the way he would do, and deal with it the way he would deal with this. Thank you so much.